I've been performing full time uh, as a nothing but magic for the last 10 years. And uh, these are just a few ideas. Uh, we're going to kind of answer some questions, banter back and forth a little bit about what's going on in magic today uh, from the perspective of, you know, maybe not just what the tricks are, but like what, how we can maybe improve ourselves as performers. And especially if any of, any of the guys out there are interested in thinking, oh, maybe I want to be a full time performer. Um, little bits of advice and, uh, and ideas and things that I've come across over the last few years. What I'm about to say is everyone, including us here at this table, magicians, we, we're lazy. We, yeah. we look for the easy way out all the time. Even when it comes to, you know, what, how can we make something quicker and easier? And I'm, I'm guilty of it, but I always try to stop myself and we, we, uh, we hold each other accountable and that kind of thing Absolutely. all the time. It's like, how can, all right, wait, that was, that was fine, but how can you make it better? Right. So when you're talking about script and patter, patter, it, when I mention the word script to people, in fact, anytime the word script comes up in theory lectures and uh, when magicians are talking to each other, the word script seems to have a bad stigma. And a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't want to use a script. I'm going to sound scripted. I'm going to sound fake. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's the problem with the patter as well. It, it sounds fake. It's like, all right, I've memorized these lines. I'm going to say these lines and do these actions. And mm -hmm. it sounds, it does sound fake. Absolutely. But if you think about it, think of your favorite movie, your favorite TV show, your favorite stand-up comic, any one of these, even your, your favorite musician. If you go to a live concert of these people and listen to what they're saying, every single word, every action, every moment is thought out. Right. But it doesn't seem like and it doesn't Looks look natural, like it. natural, right. So it, it has, as long as you have a good reason for what you're saying, what you're doing in your actions, it's gonna go by the audience, not just go by, but it's going to strengthen the magic and take their mind off of the things you don't want them to know. It's like how the trick is done, the moves, the slights, or the dead time. There's a great uh, quote by the author, uh, Oscar Wilde, um, they probably were forced to read some stuff of Oscar Wilde at some point in school. But uh, Oscar Wilde once said, uh, be yourself, everyone else is taken. <laughs> um, and that's true. I mean, there's no, like everyone is copying everyone else. I mean, this, this actually dives into the, the different part of, uh, of magic today, uh, the video world. Magic in, magic on TV, magic in video, like people, that's how people are learning you know, a lot of you guys, everyone at home, uh, you're watching your computer right now, or you're, yeah. you know, or a DVD or anything. Uh, you're learning from video, and th that's great in certain ways because you can see how the tricks are done. You can get ideas for presentation. But the bad part of this is that it creates this world of everyone being the same. It, it's, you know, we can. It's good to look at video and learn from it and learn and, and by example, but then take it a different direction. You know, we. Um, if everyone's the same, if you're the same as every other magician that your audience sees, why should they want to watch you? How does somebody be themselves? How do you know how to be yourself? Well, that's and a, I think that goes beyond magic, but that, that's a whole big problem right there. I think how how do you how do you be yourself? Um, it is the most difficult question. People think people usually just write it in their uh, in their magic books or put tele, tele on a DVD. Oh, do your own presentation, be yourself. That's such a difficult thing because reality, in reality, do, we, do you know who you are? It takes a really a serious amount of work and uh, self-reflection to figure out who we are as people, like what kind of lines are gonna fit me, what kind of jokes are right. gonna fit me, what's my timing, what kind mm -hmm. of tricks are gonna fit me. I've seen some great pieces of magic that I look at and say, oh, I'd love to do that, but it's not me. I'm not gonna right. do it. Focus first and foremost on presentation. That'd be my one bit of advice. Right. And you know, keep your chops up and everything, obviously that's important, but figure out how to make the presentation stronger and memorable. Right. And then uh, I'd say the other piece of advice I would have is do not limit yourself in, um, in inspiration. Like we are so focused, magic for, a, for lack of a better, less crude word, is magic is incestuous. It's we are <laughs> influenced by only magic. Like for example, when I work on presentations, and I'll, I'll actually demonstrate or talk about a couple things in a minute, but when I do um, when I look to inspiration to create a new piece of magic, mm -hmm. I look to books that I've read, movies that I love watching, um, things that I love doing in life, you know, whether it's, uh, what, what are you interested in? What do you do other than magic? That's a hard question to answer. So those are the two things. Basically, don't focus on just the trick and really look to figure out what your inspiration is, where, where to get inspiration to create new tricks and create new presentations. My approach, approach to magical presentations is to use some sort of whimsical thing that I, in my mind, am believing to the point that obviously it's ridiculous, it's not really happening, but I want them to think that it is and suspend their disbelief for a minute, just for a couple minutes and enjoy that theater with me. 
So let me ask you this, uh, just from where you are, Dan, can you see the coin right now? Yep. Right now, um, if I were to put my hand over it, can you see it now? No. Why not? Because you're covering it? Right, so you see the back of my hand, but you don't see the coin, right? Right. That seems like a bit of a patronizing question. I apologize for that. The reason I'm doing that, though, I put the back of my hand over the coin. I put, well, I put my hand over it. You see the back of my hand. If I were to take this, which is right here, can you see that? No. no it's nothing. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a small piece of nothing, but it's nothing nonetheless. Now, the cool thing is if I were to take nothing and put it over the coin, now you can't see the coin because nothing is covering it. See, nothing's on top of the coin. Does that make right. sense? Right, yes. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me. I'll take the nothing out of the way. You can see the coin again. So here's the, here's the nothing. Here's the coin. We'll change perspective on this. If I put the coin behind the nothing, you can't see it. Or if I put nothing on top of the coin, you can't see it. It's a matter of perspective, like I said. We'll turn the whole thing over. Now I've got a coin on top of nothing. Right. <laughs> this is really confusing, isn't it? I'll tell you what. Um, we get rid of that one. I have a smaller piece of nothing. Here, here it is, smaller piece of nothing. This is actually too small to cover the entire coin. It covers part of it, though. It covers like just enough of the coin to make it look like it's like partly gone. Yeah. That's how the whole thing works. So just nothing is on top of the coin. I'll take, um, tell you what, I'll take the nothing out of the way of the coin. Right here. You can have that. Just never tell anyone that I never gave you nothing. <laughs> awesome. That's so good. That's so good. It's a long good. way to go for that, isn't it? <laughs> So that's called pieces of nothing, and it's a thing that I've done for a long time, and I enjoy doing it because it's not about the coin trick. I mean, people are, the, the trick is amazing to the lay audience. They don't know what happens to the coin, but it's secondary. The, they're on a, a little whimsical journey with me that is just as magical to me as the moments that they're seeing. So, thank yeah, you. I hope that answered no, your question. Thank you so, so much, guys. If you guys yeah. never saw Francis Minotti, you should definitely check him out. He is amazing, um, and I love you to death. I know. Thank you guys.